Good morning, I'm Steve Botari in for Adam Sexton. While at this point it does not appear that monkeypox will be anything close to what COVID-19 was, there are growing concerns and growing case numbers. Once again, a public health threat is being met with at times, confusing news about a virus, a vaccine, and what the future might hold. This is people are still wondering what the COVID pandemic will look like come the fall. So here to discuss all that is state epidemiologist, Dr. Benjamin Chan. Dr. Chan, thanks for your time this morning. Good morning, I'm happy to be with you. So let's start with monkeypox and here in New Hampshire, where are we at this point on cases? Uh, yeah, so uh, the CDC is updating the numbers of monkeypox cases by state um, every, every day, Monday through Friday. And if you look on CDC's website, we currently have uh, 15 people identify and identified and confirmed with monkeypox uh, in New Hampshire. I, I will note, though, that uh, the trajectory of the 2022 outbreaks of monkeypox is dramatically increasing both in the U.S. and across the globe. So we expect um, additional infections with the monkeypox virus to be identified over the coming weeks and months. And Dr. Chen, with uh, with COVID in being in the public consciousness over the last couple of months, we've all become kind of junior epidemiologists. And we've heard of this iceberg theory of public epidemiology, meaning that the confirmed tested numbers that you get for every one of those, there's usually exponentially more out there in the public that just aren't being reflected in the numbers. So with that predicate being laid, what do we think is the, the real number here in New Hampshire? Or do we have any estimates about that? Yeah, so it's always hard to predict what the real number or the real burden of infection um, is going to be. But I, I want to be clear, though, that the monkeypox virus is a very different virus from um, COVID-19. Um, it's transmitted um, in, in different ways. The infectiousness of it is, is different. Um, and so the risk to the general public is not at the same level as um, when we talk about the, the COVID-19 virus. You know, so we, we believe that the monkeypox virus is circulating in our communities in New Hampshire and across the United States. Um, and one of the goals of the public health response is to uh, be able to identify infection uh, so that we can respond appropriately and, and prevent it um, from spreading. Um, we don't think that there's a large burden of monkeypox uh, right now in New Hampshire, but we are seeing uh, the transmission increase. And so we do expect uh, additional cases to be identified in the future. And the goal of our response is to try and contain that spread Preventing, uh, prevent it from spreading to others. Um, and part of that is going to need to involve um, increasing access to uh, the monkeypox virus vaccine, uh, what we call the Geneos vaccine that we have available. And so at this point, do we know is transmission actually occurring here in New Hampshire or are most of these still related to travel and, and exposure in other places? Yeah, what I, what I can say is that um, the this is a virus that can infect anybody and it primarily spreads through close particularly physical contact uh, between people between one person who has the monkeypox virus infection and um, somebody else who comes into physical contact with them uh, and primarily what we're seeing right now is spread through sexual networks uh, and sexual or intimate contact and that's occurring um, in the New Hampshire area including you know regionally um, but it's always hard to obtain um, a lot of detailed data on exactly how somebody may or may not um, acquire an infection um, but we believe that there is risk uh, here in New Hampshire and there is risk uh, in our surrounding in, in in our communities and surrounding states as well and Dr. Chan, the U.S. is 5% of the world's population. We currently have a third of the global confirmed monkeypox cases. Um, unlike COVID, we already have a vaccine, already have a treatment. So why hasn't this been able to be contained already and why are we continuing to see it grow? Yeah, and I think that that's an important point is that the... Um increase we're seeing in the United States is um, is exponential. We're seeing a dramatic increase in infections. Um, we have the tools to both um, prevent and control spread of this virus. Uh, and we also have the tools and the therapeutics to treat people that, that might be infected. Um, in order to employ those um, those therapeutics, uh, particularly the Geneos vaccine, uh, we need sufficient supply. Um, and we need to be able to target that vaccine to people that have either been exposed uh, or people that may be at risk for exposure. Um, so over the last couple of months, uh, a lot of the public health focus has been on identifying infection, um, identifying people that are infected through testing so that those persons can isolate at home. Uh, and then we do contact tracing to identify people that may have been exposed in order to connect them with um, 
vaccination after their exposure to try and prevent those individuals from coming down with disease. Now, as our vaccine supply increases, which, which it has over the last couple of weeks, uh, we're looking to use that vaccine more and more to vaccinate people who are at risk or at highest risk for exposure before they're exposed. That, we believe, will be a much more effective use of the vaccine and be more effective at uh, controlling and preventing spread within our community. And we just heard from the White House this week. They're going to this new strategy of trying to extract five doses out of what would be one dose by switching the method of delivery. Uh, at the same time, though, there have been some public health experts out there concerned about this method of delivery because it's, it's not typical. Most healthcare professionals aren't doing this method every day. Uh, do you share in any of those concerns that um, there may be some added challenges with, with doing this new, uh, this new intradermal injection, which is you know, under the skin versus going to the layer of fat beneath it? Yeah, so, so there are definitely some um, logistical considerations and some logistic, logistical challenges that we in New Hampshire and public health agencies across the country are, are working through. Um, but, but I want to be clear that this is not some new or novel way of um, administering a medication or, or a therapeutic. This is the, the same, type of, same type of administration that many people may have had if they're getting a tuberculosis skin test, what we call a tuberculin skin test, or sometimes referred to as a PPD. This is the same route of administration where um, somebody injects a small amount of, in this case, the vaccine um, in between the layers of the skin on the forearm of, of somebody on somebody's arm, it creates a little bubble or a little wheel, um, and that uh, delivers the vaccine to the body that, that, that the body can then respond to and develop um, an immune response. So I, I think the FDA's announcement is welcome news. Um, it's, uh, it allows us to use a fifth of the normal recommended dose, but given intradermally, um, and that allows us to potentially increase vaccine access by up to fivefold. So we have enough vaccine right now in New Hampshire um, to vaccinate maybe about 730 people if we were using the standard recommended dosing. If we use this um, alternate way of dosing the vaccine, which again gives a lower dose or, or low, lower volume of the vaccine, but in, and gives it intradermally, um, we can potentially vaccinate up to you know 3,600 people or more. So it dramatically increases our ability to vaccinate people. And there are studies. There's data out there showing um, that if you give a lower dose of the vaccine intradermally, you know, between the layers of the skin, it has um, a comparable or the same immune response as if you give a higher dose, but give it subcutaneously or beneath the layers of the skin. And with this, like we saw with the mRNA vaccines, uh, the second dose, it appears, is really vital when it comes to the antibody levels and protection. Is that right? Yeah, so this is a vaccine that has been um, approved and recommended as a two-dose series. Um, each dose is given about 28 days apart. Um, this is the case whether uh, somebody gets the standard dose given underneath the skin or the newly recommended lower dose given between the layers of the skin or intradermally. Either way, it's a two-dose series given about 28 days apart. And as we see with um, many different vaccines, including you know the COVID-19 vaccine, um, the, the second um, dose is important to prime the body's immune system to have that long longer term memory, um, immune memory, and be able to provide longer term protection. And so for that reason, it's, uh, it's recommended and we, we continue to support the recommendation of this being given as a two dose series. And one of the areas of concern I've been seeing the last couple of weeks is college campuses. Now that college students are heading back, there's concerns about clusters or outbreaks on places like in dorms or campuses. Um, you know, here in New Hampshire, what are we doing to, to be proactive about that? Yes, yeah, so as, as I mentioned, um, with the um, increased allocation of the Chineos vaccine, um, we are working with our um, healthcare partners in the communities and, you know, our, our uh, Manchester and Nashua City Health Departments to uh, be able to set up clinics um, to which people can be referred uh, to get the vaccine if they've either been exposed to the virus within the last 14 days or might be at higher risk for being exposed in the future. Um, and so we're actively working this week, next week, um, to get these clinics operational with our healthcare provider partners uh, to get vaccine out into the community and to try and do it um, in a way that provides coverage across the state. Um, and so, you know, vaccination will also be open to, you know, college students, for example, that are coming into the state um, who may be at higher risk. I, I, I do want to be clear, though, that um, the, the risk to the general public or the general population, including, um, you know, college campuses is 
is considered low. And that again, this is a virus that's primarily transmitting through sexual networks. And so the people that are at um, highest risk for becoming exposed to this monkeypox virus are those people that um, have certain sexual risk factors. And it's those individuals that we're trying to target the vaccine to before they have an exposure. Got it. Uh, and Dr. Chen, in our remaining time, I did want to get your take on the, the outlook when it comes to the coronavirus and the fall. So kids are now heading back to college soon. Students will be heading back to elementary, high school, middle schools. Uh, a lot of people go back to their regular routines. What are we expecting when it comes to the fall and COVID at this point? Will this be a seasonal uh, uptick are we expecting or, or what's kind of the forecast? Yeah, excellent question, and this is something we're monitoring very closely. You know, COVID is still with us. Um, the, the virus continues to evolve. It continues to undergo genetic changes. Uh, and those changes make the virus more likely to um, evade or escape the antibodies and, and, immune, and immune response that we've developed over the last, you know, couple of years. Um, and so as we've heard from the federal government, the, the pharmaceutical companies, um, Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna, are updating their vaccine um, to incorporate some of the newer variants of concern that have emerged, particularly the BA5 variant. Um, so we expect that likely um, end of September, beginning of October, uh, we're going to see more information and more data about these updated booster doses, um, how they should be used. We are planning uh, and expecting that COVID-19 is likely to increase, the circulation is likely to increase come the fall and the winter, um, and that an updated uh, vaccine booster will be important for people, um, but that doesn't change the recommendations we have now. People right now should um, get vaccinated if they haven't already. That includes um, completing a primary series uh, and getting recommended booster doses if they're recommended to get a booster dose with the currently available formulation. I will say that these updated booster doses that are coming um, are not a replacement for the primary series. Uh, they are um, an updated booster dose. And so it's important for people to at least get that primary series um, before they can get the updated uh, booster doses this fall or winter. But we'll see how this rolls out over the coming months. All right, state epidemiologist Dr. Benjamin Chen, we really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.